Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Today's video, we're going to put up a shade cloth over the strawberries, set up a dosatron for my flowers, and trellis the green beans and the cucumbers I planted last week. So stay tuned! We just got back from Yoder's Produce Supply, and let me show you what we picked up. The first thing is some shade cloth for the strawberry high tunnel. Because strawberries like to set fruit between 60 and 80 degrees. Anything over 85 degrees, they really slow down in production. And my high tunnel with my sensors has been anywhere between 90 and 100 because we've had such a hot summer. So the shade cloth I've received or bought from them is 40% shade. And I think this will do an excellent job of keeping them nice and cool. The shade cloth I picked up doesn't have any grommets, which makes it so much easier because I use these clippets and put it where I need them to hold it down over the high tunnel. So it makes it a lot better. And these things, I think, are like 20 cents each. And you can just reuse them because I had another piece of shade cloth and I was able to take them off and reuse them and place them where you need them. We always used to use Redo Heat. And that's a paint that you paint on the outside of your greenhouse or your high tunnel to reduce the UV rays that come in and it keeps it a lot cooler. But the only problem we found over the years is that it doesn't always come off in the winter time after the heavy rains and there's always a residue for it. And it's pretty expensive. It's like $300 for, I think it's under five gallons and that's enough just to do the greenhouse for one year. This shade cloth is gonna last me a lot of years. So I'm really happy we decided to go this route. So the other project I need to get completed is to set up my dosatron for my flowers. So the last thing I picked up at the Yoder's Produce Supply is the Miller's Water Soluble Fertilizer and I got 20, 10, 20 because that promotes more flowers and less vegetation. Well, I better get the van unloaded and the first thing I'm going to do is get my dosatron all set up. And I'm not sure where I'm going to put everything. I can't wait till we get the garage done. I'm running out of space in here. Let me give you a little background of why I want to do the dosatron system for my flowers. Last December, I wanted an auction, a bunch of really pretty pots that are up along my um, deck. And I filled them all up with flowers. Plus, I had a bunch of wire hanging baskets from the years past with cocoa liners. And I got new cocoa liners. I filled all those up with flowers. So every day, it was taking me over two hours to water everything. So Doug said, let's make this automated. So we went through and put water lines through. We did the spaghetti tube with the drip emitter like I use for my betel buckets, the 0.5, and then put a stake into each one, each of the baskets, each one of the hanging baskets, each one of the pots, and even along my bedding plants. And it's working out so well. Put a really nice timer on it, and it comes on every three hours for like 15, 20 minutes and keeping everybody hydrated. And I had a really nice top dressing of time release fertilizer. Well, that kind of gave out you know, a week or so ago because you look at your plants, you can just see they're not quite as vibrant and quite as green. So I want to get nutrients to them. Right now I have six dosatrons in use, three for the tomatoes and three for the strawberries. Well, we had an extra one in stock just in case somebody gave out. Well, we've been really diligent about keeping them clean and this guy's been sitting around for two years. And I thought, you know, let me use them for my flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them set up and I'm gonna use a Miller's mix. It's a water soluble mix and it's a 20-10-20, like I said before, to help my flowers have not a lot of vegetation and more blooms. So this way I'll be able to deliver the nutrients that they need. So this is how I'm going to set up the dosatron. I have the fresh water supply coming in here and it can either go through the dosatron or I can do a bypass for fresh water. So either turn this on and it goes through the dosatron and that will be off or turn this off and leave this on and it goes through the water and you have to come up through this pipe and there's a T that needs to be installed and then it goes out to a filter before it goes out to the spaghetti tubes because you want to make sure no debris or anything gets into the tubes and the emitter because then it'll be all clogged up. I'm not very good at cutting the pipe, so when Doug comes home, he's gonna go ahead and cut this, and I'm gonna have him glue and cleaner everything because I hate the smell of the glue. It always gives me a headache, so that's gonna be his job this evening. So once the dosatron and all the pieces parts are glued together, we're gonna to mount this on a board, and the board's gonna be mounted underneath the deck. And the reason we wanna do it on a separate board is so we can take it on and off in the wintertime, so we don't want the dosatron to freeze. Then after we get it Mounted, I have to get one of my big 55 gallon drums. Luckily, I got a bunch at an auction a few years ago. Fill that up with water, and I'm going to do a light solution of the water soluble 201020 and start feeding the flowers. And I'm going to keep an eye on them to see how they do. I don't want them to go too crazy, but I want them to have a nice green color. So I'll adjust the dosage as the time goes on just by watching the plants. Well, we got it all put together. There was a little bit of a change of plan. 
We decided to put in two unions. This way we can unscrew it, and if we have to take the dosatron off, either to clean it or if it needs any type of maintenance, we'll be able to do that and then zip it back together real easily. So I'm underneath the deck. Oh my gosh, there's so many spiders, but that's okay. So I need to put up the uh, nutrient line to the dosatron to go to my tank. But this is a temporary setup for this year because next year we're gonna redo the deck because this deck is over 25 years old and there's so many rotten spots that we wanna get it redone. And I think in the, putting the dosatron and the nutrient tank downstairs in the basement. So this way I can monitor it a lot better and I don't have to worry about taking the dosatron down every winter because it freezes. So now I need to go get my 55 gallon barrel, put it up here next to the dosatron, put the nutrients in it, fill it up with water and get it going. So I turned on the system to check it out before I got my nutrients going and my filter's leaking so I needed to tighten it up. Oops. There we go. So now it's a matter of pouring the nutrients into the 55 gallon barrel, made a little funnel, get those in there, get the nutrients in, and then I'm going to get the hose and fill it up with water. Okay, ready for the hose. So I'm filling up the barrel with water, my 55 gallon drum, and it's going to dissolve all the nutrients and it'll be ready for me to insert the dosatron uptake uh, hose. And I'm going to set my dosatron at 50%. And I'm going to monitor it with my handheld blue lab meter and I'm shooting for 2.0 for my EC. Well I wanted to bring you guys back in the greenhouse earlier but it was so hot outside today when I was putting the shade cloth on the high tunnel I had to take a break and go ahead and change. So we're back in the greenhouse and I want to tell you something really cool that I got done today. So when I was buying the shade cloth for the high tunnel like I said when I was at the supply company they had other pieces of shade cloth that were a lot smaller in width and I thought, you know what, let me get a couple of these to put in the greenhouse because it's been so hot this summer and the lettuce hasn't been growing very well. So I thought, you know, what if I put a couple of these up and on each side of the bay and it's like 30% shade and see how it works out. So that's what I did. So we've had quotes to put the shade cloth on the outside of the greenhouse, but that entails putting new hardware in. You have to walk down the gutter and it's really labor intensive. And then we used to do the redo heat and that was very expensive. That was 300 and some dollars. So I thought, let's try the interior shade cloth, just $100 for a piece of it, and it was really easy to put up. So we call this side of the greenhouse the road side because it faces the road. So I wanted to put up a 60-foot piece, and the shade cloth is so light, I was able just to carry it down and just lay it out on the sidewalk, get it unrolled, and I was able to then take the end of it and loop it over each one of the purlins here. And it was so easy, I just kept moving my ladder down and pulling it across and it just pulled across so easily. So as I pulled the shade cloth across each one of the purlins, I got down to the one by the tomatoes and I pulled it across the tomatoes to stretch it out and I put five clippets on it. Then I took my twine and I was able to tie it to the purlin and pull it nice and tight. And then as I was coming down towards the backside, towards the wet wall, I took my broom handle and just kind of stretched the shade cloth out, got it untangled and unfolded, and when I got back to the end, I did the same thing. I pulled it across, put five clippets on it, pulled it really tight to, the per tight to the purlin, and I stretched it, and it looks beautiful. One of my main concerns with putting in an interior shade cloth system was my jet fan, because it pushes the air down through the greenhouse and circulates it above the plant canopy. But the way this shade cloth is, the air goes right through it, so I don't have any concerns. As you can see behind me, there's no plants in the channels. This whole bay doesn't have any plants. I'm getting ready to do our deep clean. This is the best time of year to do it because right now all the outside crops are coming in and it's my slow time of the year. So I'm getting ready to clean out the uh, nutrient tank, my return lines, and my feed lines. Plus, I love to power wash my sidewalk because it gets so dirty after harvesting so much all the year long and I'm going to wash down my side walls and just get everything ready for a new season. This is my second bay. We call this a creek side and I installed a hundred foot shade cloth over the one side, the 15 foot side, and it has made such a big difference. My plants seem so much happier 
you know, I wish I would have did this last month, but got it installed now and should be up here for another six weeks. So now let's go outside and I'll show you what I did for my high tunnel for my strawberries. Wanted to show you guys something else before we get over to the high tunnel. I was having really bad Japanese beetles on top of my strawberries and they were driving me crazy because those things fly all over the place and they land on me and it's ugh, just so gross. So I went ahead and got a Japanese beetle trap and I know that you're supposed to put it far enough away from the area you want to protect. So I have it uh, over here and it's probably about 50 yards away from the high tunnel and it's really making a big difference. When I was harvesting strawberries this morning, there was maybe a third of the many Japanese beetles in there. So what I'm going to do with the ones that are in the bag is I'm going to freeze them so they're dormant and then I'm going to take them out to our pond and feed them to the fish. What better way to get rid of them? So this is the main reason we went to the supply company. I wanted to get shade cloth on the strawberries. Like I said before, if it gets above 85 degrees in there, they really slow down their production. And it was really easy to get the shade cloth over. We threw the string over the top of the arches. I was able to pull it down and get one side started. And we just went down each side, just pulling little by little. And we got it set in place. And then we put the clippets on and we tied them to every one of the braces. I do have to come back when it gets a little bit cooler out and finish tying them down to the braces so it doesn't blow away in any thunderstorms or anything. But it has made such a big difference. When I walk in there this morning, or I mean this afternoon, it was so much cooler and it just felt so much more comfortable. Getting ready to install the shade cloth on the high tunnel. It's 40% shade, so I'm really excited about getting it over the strawberries. But the first thing I need to do is install clippets on the edge of the shade cloth. So I got the two edges here, it's folded in half. And I'm gonna put them down every four or five feet. And then we're gonna attach a rope to it, throw it over the top of the high tunnel and pull it over. When I was working in the greenhouse today, I looked over at the cucumbers and the beans and it looked like the cucumbers are almost ready to be trained and trellised up the uh, betel bobbins and it looked like the beans are ready to be twisted up. So a couple days ago we went ahead and dropped down the bobbins to get them ready in anticipation of doing this job. So I thought I'd come back after dinner and see if they could be trellised and trained. Okay, let's take a look at the cucumbers and they don't look like they're quite tall enough to be clipped to the string yet. So I'm gonna wait a couple more days and check them out. But I think the beans are a different story. Now the beans don't need vine clips with them because they like to wrap themselves around the uh, twine. I didn't even train these. Just dropped the bobbins down a couple days ago, like I said, and the beans have found it already and they're already training themselves. When you wanna train the beans, you wanna make sure you pull the twine nice and tight. And then you just take, take the bean and just gently wrap them around and the next day he'll climb all by himself and now I want to show you something really cool down at the end so hang on one second and I'll go show you but look at this crazy guy he decided to climb up the nutrient line he's really wrapped tight in there but I think I'm gonna let him go all the way up because I don't think I can get him out of there without hurting him so I think it'll look pretty cool well, I'm going to end the video here, but before I go, I'm going to put up a little segment of a video that I took of a new calf that was born here on the farm. The mom is Cecilia, and she's a great cow and taking really good care of it, but I can't get close to the calf, so I have no idea if it's a bull calf or a heifer, because George the bull keeps babysitting. So hopefully I'll get to check it out the next day or so. So like always, please leave me questions, comments, and suggestions down below, and we'll see you guys next video.